Hey everybody, welcome back to MedEd Insights, the channel dedicated to helping you get through medical school and more. So I got a lot of really awesome feedback about the first interview that I did with Dr. Hardman talking all about anesthesiology. And so I thought for my next interview, who better than my very own big sister who is a doctor of physical therapy. And I get a lot of questions talking about some of the differences between what physical therapists do as opposed to what we're doing in physical medicine and rehab as physicians. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to to sit down and chat with her a little bit about what she does as a physical therapist and then talk a little bit more about the relationship between doctors and PTs. Thanks a lot, Kim, for taking some time this weekend to sit and do this with me. So first, take a chance just to introduce yourself to everybody, talk about your education, your background, and what you're currently doing for your job right now. Hi, everybody. I um, I went to the University of Evansville in southern Indiana, and I got my undergraduate degree in athletic training, so I'm also a certified athletic trainer. And then I stayed there for PT school also, and um, like Brian said, I'm a doctor of physical therapy and I currently now work in the outpatient setting just a small privately owned clinic here in Terre Haute so I want to walk through a lot of the questions that you all have asked me are things like well what's the difference between a physical therapist and a physiatrist or a doctor mm -hmm. of physical medicine and rehab and you know beyond the obvious one of the specialties is a medical physician as opposed to you as the physical therapist I want to kind of talk through the the sequence of how we work together, the physicians and the therapists in taking care of a patient. And so from our side as the physician, we will often see the patient, first of all, in terms of looking at making a diagnosis. And then we will come up with what we think is the best treatment. And typically that involves therapy. Mm -hmm. So talk through then what your role is as a therapist after I've seen a patient in clinic as the doctor and where you take over with how to help that patient. So if I get an order from a physician, that's very specific on, I want these treatment techniques to be done or mm -hmm. sometimes not done. Some physicians sure. are specific with, I don't want this treatment done for whatever reason. Okay. Um, so if there are specifics, then obviously we integrate that into our treatment plan. Mm -hmm. If there's not specifics, then Again, depending on that first day evaluation, I'm going to put together a treatment plan that I think is okay. That's going to come back to you, the physician then, okay. to sign off on the plan of care sure. yep. um, to either approve or not approve the things that I'm at least suggesting could show up in the care of that patient. I see. Okay, so you talked about briefly in that answer that um, sometimes it depends on if a doctor has actually seen the patient mm -hmm. first of all. And right. I think that's one of the common misconceptions and something that, you know, I've only recently learned. Are you able as a physical therapist to see patients before a doctor mm -hmm. has ever seen them? And if so, what does that look like in terms of your right. role in their care? <clears throat> so the answer is yes, we can. It's something called direct access which um, is a law that has been passed to allow physical therapists to see a patient without them going to see a doctor first. Nice. It's, it's nice for the people that have had good results with physical therapy before and say maybe they think they've got something else going on that a physical therapist could address. So they can mm -hmm. at least skip one step in the process to start with physical therapy. The law is that we have 24 days to work with that person, okay. calendar days, day one to 24, whatever we get in that amount of time with visits is what we have to work with them. If we think they would benefit from continuing therapy afterwards, then I would either say, hey, let's go back to your doctor, check in, mm -hmm. see if they're okay with you continuing therapy. Sure. Let's get then an order from the doctor to to continue. Okay. Therapy. In that context, I'm, I'm sure there's a difference between what you all as therapists can diagnose mm -hmm. patients with versus what we might diagnose them with as physicians. So right. are there any differences between what, you know, are you guys able to diagnose someone with a specific condition or what are you guys kind of... Right. So I, I won't give a medical diagnosis, okay? okay. That would be your job as yep. the physician to give a medical diagnosis. My job then when I see that person is consider the medical diagnosis, but then determine what is their treatment diagnosis okay. or what is their physical therapy diagnosis. And, and that will be separated in our documentation. And, and it could be something 
as simple as weakness, unsteadiness with gait, falls, okay. stiffness, that sort of thing. Okay. What's driving my treatment with that person? While I still consider the medical diagnosis, obviously, sure, and, sure. and most of the times will agree with that medical diagnosis just with some of my special testing mm -hmm. does it seem rotator cuff does it seem sure. knee osteoarthritis um but more is developing the treatment diagnosis Excellent. so i guess to give kind of a specific example <clears throat> of what we're talking about with that difference between a medical diagnosis and a therapy or treatment diagnosis let's say i see a patient who has spinal stenosis right. so spinal stenosis might be an example of a specific medical diagnosis mm -hmm. that I would give a patient. Whereas when you see that patient, you might give them a diagnosis of, you know, weakness or right. pain or right. stiffness or mm -hmm. something, something more functional right. than the actual yeah, medical Yeah. So side. what, what is that stenosis causing sure. to that person and what's the effect on their function yeah. that I need to focus on the most? Sure. Them? And that's a really cool transition because I know in physical medicine and rehab, our whole goal and theme of our care is function and quality of life. Yeah. And so I think a lot of times when doctors send patients to physical therapy, we think that we're just sending them to someone to stretch them right. and like be an exercise coach. Right. But I'm sure that's not the case at all. Right. I mean, I know I'm sure you guys get a lot of bit more training. And so talk briefly just what training you guys have in terms of mm -hmm. how that overlaps with, you know, just general function and overall right. movement of the yeah. patient whenever you're seeing them. Right. And it's, it's a, it's a misconception of patients also. Mm. So a lot of times on the first day I'll have patients come in and they're almost kind of terrified. Like they think it's going to be this intense, like the aggressive, <laughs> like they're here to work out. And, yeah. and so often that's not the case unless okay. I have high, um, you know, high performance athletes and then sure. i'm getting into some of those things but um it is i think physical therapists like to think of ourselves as movement specialists and so cool. while we've learned everything about the body in a smaller version of what a physician has learned you're learning how do all the pieces fit together mm -hmm. and and how do i hone in on um, what is the pain doing to my movement or what is my sure. movement doing to affect my pain? Right. And so a lot of my training and what I choose to look at with people is that relationship of, mm -hmm. of pain and dysfunction, basically. Yeah. And it comes down to understanding movement. Yeah, that's cool. It's like I said, we forget and think <clears throat> you're just exercise coaches. <laughs> like, right. um, But I think, you know, our therapist, for anybody out there that's a, a doc, mm -hmm. like, Having just worked with therapists for a brief time in the hospital, mm -hmm. I mean, the therapists have a, a really unique skill set that we don't get. I mean, I don't know how to perform these assessments. Right. I don't know as a doctor, I don't necessarily understand that kinetic chain as well as someone like a therapist might. And so it's it's nice that we rely on our therapists and actually yeah. like kind of have that give and take relationship where right. we can offer our medical expertise and they can offer their expertise mm -hmm. in terms of looking at how the patient's overall moving and, you know, get their insight and thoughts on things as well. One of the things I know you're really interested and excited about with physical therapy is this idea of prevention more mm -hmm. so than, you know, reaction whenever something right. goes wrong. Talk a little bit. I think it's a really exciting thing to think about, you know, people getting like a yearly, you know, movement right. physical or like right. movement yeah. screen. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit more about that and just kind of why you think that could be helpful or important for patients. I mean, if we think about you go to a dentist preventatively, mm -hmm. we all, you know, just know, okay, every six months I should be going to the dentist. Yep. Even if I don't think I have a problem, I just mm -hmm. know I'm going to do it. Um, same thing with our eyes. If we wear glasses or contacts, we know every year I've got to go back and get my eyes right. checked. And so it's, it's too bad that we don't, you know, take, yes, if it's one time a year at a certain age, starting off with people, our, our kids get physicals to assess their movement when they're playing sports. But yeah. beyond that, we don't just sit and look at how is somebody moving and sure. if there's potentially something maybe not as good as it could be with their movement or if you're a person that sits at a desk for eight nine ten hours a day you know what's that doing to your body yeah. to where we could potentially prevent you know breakdown yeah. over time and yeah. you know catch yeah, a lot I mean, of things you know the same way you get your heart checked and you get your right. kidneys checked or whatever mm -hmm. you should be getting your muscles checked your you should be getting checked, your body right. checked and right. we're finding more and more of course like you know that 
a lot of these injuries like back pain, I mean, there is no medicine. There is no like surgery or specific right. treatment that's just going to cure pain. It's all related to movement. And it so is. if we can yeah. start doing more ahead of time to prevent yeah. those bad habits mm -hmm. from developing, then, yeah. you know, we could potentially help a lot of people. So that's yeah. really interesting. Talk a little bit about what is something that we can do as doctors when we're working and sending our patients to therapists to try to optimize the therapy they're receiving in terms of you know how much direction should we give how much guidance right. should we give how much should we be doing in sure. terms of that so i think any therapist is going to be very open to direction from a doctor mm -hmm. i sometimes feel a little bit more out of the loop if i get an order that just says low evaluate back and treat evaluate <laughs> and treat well okay i don't know what that patient has been through already sure. with the doctor i don't know what the doctor has told that patient mm -hmm. am i now telling them something completely different because right. i don't know all that they've gone through with the doctor so i think most therapists are going to be very open to suggestion from a doctor mm -hmm. we're most strict sometimes when we have a protocol a post-op protocol which that's sure. really important too for obvious reasons but you know i think any information that allows us to feel sort of in the loop with how that first visit with you went mm -hmm. and maybe what your suggestions for us are is great but then at the same time you know trusting in the therapist mm -hmm. diagnosis of movement and and what that treatment plan needs to be also is a nice a nice give and take yeah okay i want to switch gears a little bit and talk i know most of the people who watch these videos on the channel are med students are thinking about medical school right. but obviously there's a ton of stuff you can do within the medical field mm -hmm. i want to get into a little bit about kind of decisions on becoming a therapist versus being a physician so first of all just how much training is required to become a physical therapist in terms of education you know clerkships, clinical, stuff like that. Yeah. So you have to have an undergraduate degree. Okay. okay. So you're going to do four years of undergrad. People do any variety of exercise science, athletic training, biology. I mean, you can, you can really have any sort mm. of undergraduate degree. And then PT school, now that it's a doctorate degree, is three years, three very okay. full years. Um, clinical work, most programs are going to have anywhere from three to four clinicals, um, not the length of time that some doctors are going to spend doing things, but you might do a clinical anywhere from six to 10 weeks long. And you're going to okay. cover similar to what you did. You're going to mm -hmm. cover acute care, even if you don't want to do acute kind of care, different you're going to cover of, different yeah, areas sure. of it, neuro and then outpatient as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then you'll sit for your boards afterwards okay. once you graduate from school. And then once you pass those boards, you're free to start working in whatever nice. setting you okay. want to work in. If you want to do specific, like working on a rehab unit where you're mm -hmm. taking care of patients with spinal cord injuries, right. do you have to do specific like fellowships or mm -hmm. additional training so that you right. can work in those settings? Right. So additional training wouldn't be required okay. to start in that setting, especially for a new grad. If they knew that's what they wanted, mm -hmm. they could start working. Now, the therapists that spend their careers in those settings, they're most likely doing continuing education to be focused on neuro rehab sure. or techniques that fit that or fall risks or elderly patients. You know, they're gonna they're gonna probably do continuing ed specific to that. Yeah. You can do certifications, you know, you mm -hmm. can get a manual therapy certification, you okay. can um, get specialized training and, yeah. and most of those things might take up to a year of time if you want to get some sort of orthopedic clinical specialist okay. you know credentials sure. behind your name but nothing's you know required Nothing like where you have required. to hang something on your wall to, before right. you can be in a setting right. so talk then anything else just in general if someone's trying to decide you know gosh like i really you know i went to physical therapy and i enjoyed mm -hmm. learning about what the therapist was doing but I've you know heard about being a doctor as well. Like sure. any just general tips or things people can think about if they're mm -hmm. you know leaning more towards physical therapy that might clue them right. in to say hey maybe this is a good fit versus mm -hmm. you know physician side. Yeah, so physical therapy is going to be a little bit more specific than sure. you know we overlap similar mm -hmm. in some of our thoughts throughout the day. As a physical therapist, probably the the biggest difference is the continuity that I stay with okay. a person. Sure. And so, you know, if you really, obviously what you do is very impactful on patients' lives. 
if you want to be constantly hands-on with that person, yeah. that might be one of the biggest differences. Because I'll see somebody probably at least one time a week for mm -hmm. a period of time. Sure. I might okay. see them two times. If they're post-op, I'm going to see that person three times yeah. a week. And so yeah. I'm really affecting, you know, yeah. that person multiple times a week. No, that's true. I, and yeah, I mean, so we'll see someone once and then right. we see them six weeks later after they mm -hmm. finish therapy or something. Yeah. And I've seen too, you know, in the on the rehab units at the hospital for people in rehab, a lot of times that patient who is a new paraplegic mm -hmm. has the same physical therapist sure. oh, during yeah. their entire three, mm -hmm. four week rehab stay. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's cool because they you can tell like they form a really unique relationship oh, because yeah. this person who previously was totally independent now has to rely on mm -hmm. someone else to help train them how to you know, do the simplest of things right. like get out of a chair or right. transfer yeah. to a toilet. Mm -hmm. And so the therapists are doing way, way more of that hands-on stuff than we are sure. as the doctors. And so from my side of it, I think if you, if you really want to be more like hands-on with the patient, like right. you want to be with them throughout mm -hmm. the day and you want yeah. to be with them throughout the week or multiple times a month that maybe think more towards physical therapy because you're going to be able to do that. I mean, I, with my patients, I'm not the one helping them learn transfers. I'm not right. the one helping yeah. them with their shoulder pain. I'm mm -hmm. seeing them and coming up with a plan and then sending them on their way. So right. um, definitely something to think about if you kind of like that aspect of, of patient care more than the other. Well, thank you so much, Kim. I appreciate you doing this. No um, this was really awesome. I hope it kind of helps answer some questions or just some thoughts people have had about, you know, what we do as physiatrists versus what physical therapy is all about. If you have any questions, as always, comment below. I have a pretty quick uh, line to get a hold of her if I have to ask any other questions and people have specific ones about physical therapy, getting into PT school, should I apply, should I not apply, anything at all like that. Let me know in the comments below. As always, subscribe. Feel free to share these videos with anybody else if you enjoyed them. And we'll talk to you all next time. Take care, everybody.